Hello, it's me, Johanna, and today we are doing chapter two. We're doing chapter 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3. These are all very short chapters, which is why I put them all into one video. So chapter two in total is about representing relationships, but chapter 2.1 specifically is what is a function. So first of all, we have to understand what a relation is. A relation is a relationship between any set of ordered pairs and it can be expressed as mapping or a graph. So this is essentially you have an X and you have a Y. You might get millions of Y values or millions of X values for whatever the case may be, but there is a relationship between these two sets of data. A function is a more specific type of relation. It can either be a one-to-one -one mapping or a many-to-one -one mapping, but it can't be a many-to-many -many mapping or a one-to-many mapping. Essentially what this means is that the x value always has to lead to only one y value. However, a y value can correlate to many x values. That is essentially all that means. And to see if something is a function or not, you can use the vertical line test, which is essentially if you take a ruler and uh, put it so that it is vertical and go across your graph, if there is at any point two points that are touching the ruler, then it is not a function. If there at all times is only one point touching the ruler, then there is, then it is a function. This is due to the fact that on a graph, the horizontal line represents the x value, meanwhile the vertical line represents the y value. Now let's test the knowledge we just learned by doing exercise 2a, but only question 1. So question 1 is determine whether each relation below is a function or not. If it is a function, state the reason why. So let's do a. The number of identical marbles and the total mass of the marbles. I would say yes, or I, I, I mean it is a function. I don't know why I said that as in it was debatable. It just is one because the more marbles you add, the bigger the mass will get. So there would only be one X and one Y value for each. It wouldn't be a many to many mapping or anything like that. It would be a one to one mapping. Now, if we skip down a bit, we can do f. Is f a function? Yes, because yet again, there is only the y values may lead to many x values, but the x values only lead to one y value. Now we can look at i, which is x equals 3. Is that a function? Imagine how that would look like. It would be a straight line. No, it would not be a function, because if x equaled y, there would be a straight line going up. The line would be vertical, which means that if you did the ruler test, you would have all the points come in one go. All the points would touch the ruler at the same time. So no, it is not a function. Now let's look at k. Is k a function? Now you can imagine doing the ruler test. If you take a ruler vertically and put it across the graph, would you touch any points at the same time? No, you would not. So it is a function. Now, 2.2 is about functional notation. So functional notation usually looks like a letter and then in brackets, there's an X. So G of X or F of X, it could be any letter. But this represents, uh, when you say it out loud, it is called g of x or f of x um, and it represents a function f with the independent variable x. That is also something always to remember. If you don't know what would be the x and what would be the y in the situation, you think which one is the independent variable and which one is the dependent variable. So dependent is what you're measuring and in independent means the thing that is changing. So f of x is the y and then if you look in the actual function or like the actual equation formula whatnot the x is obviously the x so that is just something you have to know so when you see f of x you have to know what it means 
soon we will be doing an example, but for now we will go on to 2.3, which is about drawing graphs. So really all you have to know about this part is that the ID uses certain command terms. They use draw and sketch, and these things mean different things. They're asking for different things. So if they say draw, they mean that you should draw a two-scale, accurate, labeled graph. Meanwhile, if they say sketch, it's more you have to show the general idea of how the graph would look like. So now we will be doing an example from exercise 2b. We will do question 5. This is a British telecommunications company offers the following roaming, sorry, roaming data package to its customers. A flat fee of £25 plus £10 per gigabyte of data. So part A of this question is to express the total cost, C, as a function of the number of gigabytes of data, which will be called G. So to do this, you have to think about how the formula would look like. So C of G, because in this case, C is Y and G is the X, um, would be 25 plus 10 pounds times every gigabyte of data. So this formula would be very simple and it would look like this. So for B, uh, what values of G do not make sense in this context? I wrote negative numbers because obviously if you're doing it per gigabyte, nobody's going to have negative gigabytes because that's not how phones work. So for C, they ask you to state the notation that could be used to find the roaming cost for a trip where 14 gigabyte of data were used. Calculate this value. So 14 gigabytes were used. So I just plugged in 14 into my um, formula and I found out what Y would be and Y would be 165. So that's the amount it would cost. Now for D, you have to state the notation that could be used to find the number of gigabytes of data one can use for a total bill of 100 pounds. So in this case, we already have Y, but we're looking for X. So what I did was I plugged the Y in and then moved the numbers around until I isolated G and got the number, which was 7.5. So that was it for today. Please feel free to subscribe, like, and comment, and follow me at Johanna Frenert if you liked, if you want to, on Instagram. <laughs> and goodbye. Hope you learned something. Stay tuned for more content.